All right, so next I'd like to introduce Takuya Ikeda. Um, he's gonna be presenting on 60 pose estimation and sim to real, which is really cool. I worked with him on this project. Uh, yeah, take it away. Okay, thank you, Mike. And thank you, Taka, for this great presentation. So hi, everyone. So thank you for coming today and uh, happy Friday. So my name is Takuya Ikeda. So I'm a senior robotics engineer in Home Robot Team. And I'm a big fan of the manipulation technology itself. And uh, I love the robot very much. And today I'm going to share the, our current result related to the six spot estimation and simulation to reality. Uh, please be relaxed and enjoy. Yes, and uh, okay. okay, I can use this. Okay. okay, let's get started. So as Taka mentioned, so urban city is a living laboratory and ever evolving city. Uh, and we trust the everyday mobility of goods is important. For example, the auto delivery service, etc. cetera. And moreover, we also aim to help the urban city residents save time to enjoy their uh, lives by giving them options such as a tidy up service uh, as a long term, a long term goal. Uh, to realize such services, uh, the robotics uh, that can acquire, sort, and manipulate the household object could be important and useful. And uh, one of core technology uh, is core technologies is the object pose estimation, because uh, the starting point of every such behaviors uh, could be pose estimation. So to achieve the uh, robust and uh, okay, just a moment. Okay, uh, to achieve the robust and precise sixty pose estimation, and nowadays deep neural networks show the tons of great results, uh, as you may already know. So these videos are our experimental result using the DNNs. As you can see, the uh, DNN can uh, predict the sixty pose for the large variety of large variety of object and the challenging object such as the level-less water bottle. So level-less water bottle is a quite challenging object because this is a kind of less unique and the kind of effect of its transparency, transparent material and the liquid is so complicated. However, if high quality data are already available, so DNN have the, uh, cap has the capability to robust estimation. So, so what is the problem of the difficult, what's the problem or difficulty of DNNs, especially for six spot estimation? Uh, this is my question and curiosity. So I think one big obvious difficulty is the data preparation. So as I said, supervised manners DNNs approach uh, the data hungry and they need high quality data. So if you'd like to get the high performance, our first step might be considering the high, uh, might be considering how to create high quality data set. Let's consider the how to make the data set for six uh, estimation in indoor environment. Uh, first thing is the data collection. So in the common indoor scene, uh, there are a bunch of household objects uh, like this picture. Uh, if, you, if we want to handle the all object, we have to collect tons of data. And also for six pose estimation, ideally possible deposits should be covered in data set because we want to estimate the six pose precisely. So for example, pose of uh, uh, lying, lying down, understanding, etc. And the second thing is their uh, data annotation. For supervised learning, data annotation is required and the annotation of 60 pose for each object is incredibly, incredibly tough work. So let me explain the, uh, a little bit how hard and how tough it is. So uh, this is uh, one example of our previous annotation uh, tools and process. Uh, one of our members uh, developed uh, this tool and we have to manually adjust the 60 pose uh, uh, using, the, uh, using the 3D models of target object and the multiple RGB images and the point cloud uh, for, get, uh, for getting the high, uh, high accuracy levels. As a summary, I could say the uh, data preparation is the one of the difficulty of DNN approach, especially when we built on the, uh, built their own custom networks for the own services. So are there the better way, 
better ways instead of the uh, this way. Uh, okay, okay. So one promising approach is uh, is using the synthetic data for training, uh, because perfect level is already annotated in synthetic world. Any number of images could be generated. So this is the really nice feature, and there are many research which show. Uh, the great result using the only synthetic data for six post training estimation. Many paper under many papers mentioned the one key feature uh, is the photorealism for the, these training data set. Uh, in real images, uh, there are large variety and complex kind of physics effects such as uh, lighting, and uh, this effect possibly assists the precise estimation as humans do. And the recently, uh, kind of rendering and the renderer performance has improved very much. This is amazing. So rendered synthetic uh, data show the reasonable capability. However, I think I could say that there are still fidelity gap between synthetic and real images, especially for the material rich. Uh, object such as the transparency and shiny object, because it is difficult to set the realistic lighting and the material setting. If you are human, uh, you think you can easily distinguish uh, uh, these images. Uh, you you must think they're a kind of left image. Oh uh, yeah, left image uh, should be synthetic. Or uh, as such. Uh, we'd like to propose one approach which can bridge the uh, fidelity gap between simulation and real without manual data collection and annotation. So we want to improve the six spot estimation network performance via shim to real object style transfer uh, since manual annotation, uh, manual uh, style transfer. And since manual annotations are not required, uh, this uh, idea possibly can cut a lot of cost. Uh, such as the time and the money. So uh, if we, so our proposal is kind of, if we could transfer the style transfer of the target object uh, from synthetic to real automatically, something like that, uh, this transferred image should improve the six spot estimation performance. So uh, how do we uh, make it happen? So I will show the overview of our proposal in next slide. Uh, okay, okay. And this is an overview of our entire workflow. And the first, we gather our, okay, first this here. So first we gather the real data by robot and render the target object. And then our star transfer network is trained using the, these images with unsupervised manner. So after that, after this training, uh, the network can transfer the synthetic image to more realistic uh, this part. And then finally, suppose the estimation network is trained using the uh, transfer the images. And the one important thing is that we hypothesize the less data is required for training of stress state transfer network than those for the post estimation network. So, we try to collect and uh, collect and use minimal real data for the transfer network, style transfer network training, and then transfer the large number of synthetic images to more realistic for the post estimation network. So that's why we possibly can save the cost of real data gathering uh, in addition to the annotation. So therefore, uh, once you finish to train the style, style transfer network, uh, you could generate a large number of uh, synthetic data and transfer them more realistic. Uh, in our case, we just uh, just 500 images are used for the state transfer network for each instance. So let's dig in the uh, first uh, the first step: uh, how to train the state transfer network. So for state transfer network, we utilize their uh, kind of common technique. Nowadays, of the unsupervised generate, uh, generative adversarial networks, uh, such like the cyclogen, uh, which is a famous one of GAN technology, to convert a synthetic uh, co to convert synthetic style to more realistic. 
So uh, let me explain a little bit of, about, about the GAN technology. So uh, this generator tried to convert the, this synthetic patch area more realistic. And the, this discriminator uh, tried to distinguish uh, that it's synthetic or real. And for training phase, these operations are conducted iteratively. Then finally, this generator uh, could generate the realistic image. So this is a kind of rough explanation of the uh, GAN approach. And the other entire flow of this training, first, we render the uh, synthetic image, uh, synthetic image using the target object model and collect the real data uh, using our country robot, as Taka mentioned uh, previously, uh, day by day. So they, then the state transfer network is trained using the, uh, this data set uh, with unsupervised manner. So one important thing is that there are no manual annotations. And the second step is there are, let's dig in the phase of the uh, state transfer uh, inference. This phase requires the robust and precise conversion as much as possible without shape corruption and missing the detail feature of target object, especially for the textual rich or material rich object. Uh, usually, uh, commonly, the influence of the GAN approach uh, often can tend to the change the shape of target object and miss the detail. And this feature uh, these features are really bad effect for the uh, pose estimation. So how can we avoid the, this uh, ideal phenomenon? So in our case, since we are only interested in the uh, direction from synthetic to real, we can liberate the synthetic label information at the inference space. So uh, at the inference time, we crop the target area using synthetic mask information and scale up and do the site transfer to keep the detail of texture information. And then uh, mask out the target object and overlay target mask the area uh, to the input synthetic image. This operation, this operation can keep the a kind of precise edge information of target object. This kind of edge information sometimes quite important for the uh, perception accuracy. So then I uh, do this procedure again for the next instance. So in this image, we can see the maybe four instance. So we we do uh, four times for this procedure. Okay. And the finally, uh, pose estimation network uh, can be trained using the uh, this transferred synthetic images. This is a kind of uh, overall uh, of the our proposal. And the next, this is a result of quantitative evaluation. So as a rough explanation, uh, in this uh, left figure, uh, upper is better. So uh, I used, we used the uh, ADD matrix and uh, yeah, uh, this is a uh, uh, ADD's matrix uh, formulation of the ADD matrix. Please check it in the our paper if you're interested in more detail. And there, uh, yeah, a uh, rough explanation. Upper is better. So this is a result of post estimation network, which is trained using the low, low kind of pure synthetic images. This means that this is no adaptation result. And the next is there. This is the adaptation result of our approach. After our adaptation, uh, we can see the reasonable improvement. Uh, so we could say that our style transfer successfully bleeds the fidelity gap. Let's see the how realistic uh, original image is translated by our style transfer uh, on later slide. Uh, this is a uh, quali uh, qualitative evaluation. So as you can see the uh, top, top low, so original synthetic image doesn't have uh, doesn't have the shiny appearance the bottom of these cones, uh, but after translation, uh, the appearance looks closer to real real images because this contains the kind of shiny effect nicely, and also as interesting result. So our 3D models, this is a, a synthetic 3D model. Uh, 
uh, which come from the YCB data set, uh, and the real object have the different label. I mean, the real, a real object label uh, doesn't contain the red part, but 3D models has uh, a contained the uh, red part. Uh, okay, so doesn't contain the red part, right? Um, contain it. Okay, so uh, real, ob real object label is all blue. So, uh, be uh, because I think uh, at some point uh, vendors updated uh, this soft uh, scrub labeling for some some reason, and this 3D model scanned before updating. So it is quite common common things, right? So the appearance change of household object often happen. Uh, for example, uh, seasonable accents might be introduced, and the pro uh, promotional labels uh, possibly added and the expiration date placement uh, possibly changed. So surprising, surprisingly, our approach uh, successfully bridged uh, uh, this, uh, this kind of gap as well uh, of the labeling, label color differences uh, between synthetic and real, as you can see there uh, bottom row. Since our approach is capable of bridge their both these gaps successfully, so I believe it will uh, it will enable wider usage of the sim 2 deal. And uh, this is the final slide. And uh, this is the image before the after translation uh, for the multiple object in one image. Uh, you can see the kind of stable, realistic image regardless of view changes. So you can get the photorealistic image without any manual annotations. So, okay. So this is the final slide. Okay, thank you for listening. And you heard, if you are interested in more detail, uh, you can see the all of the information on the archive uh, archive paper. Thank you. And if I have a time, I can show the couple of slides. Okay. So how long can I? Uh, yeah. Do so do you have some more slides? Okay. Yeah. So. How long? So we have 10 minutes for Q&A. Um, so if uh, you want to put your uh, questions in Slido again or here, first thing I want to do, though, is apologize to our online participants. As I understand it, we had some network trouble. So the QA for the first portion, we're not sure if that was uh, transmitted, uh, hopefully recorded. So we will let you know by the end of the presentation or soon thereafter. Uh, but yes, so we're going to do QA for uh, Taku now. So first, um, let's take one from online. Um, okay, this is a good question. So why, from uh, Yuri, why do we need machine learning for the pick up a bottle task? Bottles are standard objects with well-known geometrical dimensions. Can't you just calculate the position of a bottle? Um, so please go ahead, you take that first. Mm, okay. Yes. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. So mm, basically for me, picking up, uh, picking up the uh, simple bottle is quite a difficult task. So especially, uh, I see, you can just calculate position of bottle. Mm, I see. Okay, so first of all, I want to handle the large variety of object in same manner. And this kind of uh, bottle is uh, one of our target object. So uh, I show, I, I explain the, uh, uh, what, how can I say, I pick the water bottle as an example of our exp explanation. Uh, so we, of course, we can calculate the position of bottle using the uh, geometry, but it's super, how can I say, specific approach. Mm -hmm. And also, even bottle have the, a lot of large variety of texture or material, so such like the transparency and the really, uh, how can I say, contains, sometimes contains a real rich material. So, yeah, I trust if we want to grasp the bottle 99% over 99%, yeah, ML approach should be reasonable. So 
Thanks. Well, no, well, thank well. you, Yuri, for the the kind of fundamental question. That is a very good question. Um, as to why we use certain approaches for things. There's a large variety of objects we're trying to pick up with radically different um, features, but thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, next, we're gonna do one more online since we you didn't get to answer the online questions before. Um, so this is a, a good one. Does uh, From Adam, does sim to real transform the color and texture of the object to be recognized only, or does it uh, transform the environment around it as well. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, this is and uh, this is really nice question. So, yeah, this is really good point. So, uh, first, uh, yes. So, simple question is, we only transfer the target object picture and the material in our uh in our approach. And then firstly, I try to combat the a background as well, uh, and the kind of other object as well. However, how can I say? It is difficult to get the, some correspondence between synthetic and real uh, nice way, because in the real world, there are a bunch variety of objects in there. And in synthetic world, we don't have the kind of correspondence model. So in that case, if we, how can I say? Try to transfer the uh, all object in the other on the simulation. Uh, kind of, uh, we it is difficult to get the, some uh, correspondence between these world. However, if we just pick the one target object, we can get the, some correspondence between synthetic and real because we can only render the target object in synthetic world. So that's why I transfer the. Uh, object only so far. However, yeah, in future, if possible, I want to transfer that all of object in at once. But so far, yeah, I only focus on the, uh, I train the state transfer network for each instance individually, and then I using the each individual state transfer network for each object to create the realistic data set. Great, okay. great. So we're gonna take one here. I saw you had your hand raised. So the question was, uh, does this approach generalize to objects that are not in the data set? Can we all of a sudden start to recognize uh, objects that are not in the data set? Gotcha. So for style transfer, not for the post. Thank you. So I didn't try it, uh, honestly. But if uh, an object has a similar feature, which contain the uh, tra training data set, uh, could say transfer could transfer the uh, this synthetic image to more realistic. However, if yeah, so I didn't try it, so I can can't answer correctly. But possibly transfer the some feature of uh, yeah, possibly convert the yeah. So I, I can say that. So yeah, so I didn't try it, and the possibly. Can combat the yeah style. I see. So I'd, they, I'd imagine one yeah. of the specifically hard things would be text. If you have text on two different objects and you're trying to replicate one based on that, might be might be difficult because that's kind of specific. Yeah, possibly false positive is occurs, so yeah. mismatch yeah. translation mm. will be mm. happen. Mm. So because we don't have data set, so yeah. all right, let's take one more in person. Yes. Mm. So. So the, the question is, is the system using depth information or is it just using 2D images of the objects? If we only use uh, one RGB image for the network input. So we, we don't necessarily to use uh, depth information. Yeah, we only use RGB information, yeah. Uh, yes, we are using the real sense for the, uh, this experimentation, yeah. Uh, we're going to jump back and take one more online, and we should still have about five minutes. So the question is, does the style transfer system work for general objects in the world? Objects in sim and real seem to be strongly tied. So if it works on uh, so it works on a predefined environment. So does it work for general objects in the world? Uh... I think this question is uh, geared around um, 
is it i think it's similar to the other question yeah, yeah. so we have to train the site transfer for each instance yeah. individually so current work we have to prepare that yeah gotcha state transfers. all right so we don't have any more online questions do we have any more questions in the room yes let's go from the left and then make our way over Gotcha. That's a good question. So are there categories of objects where sim to real is easier or more difficult? And yes, but you can. Categorize synthetic is more easy. Uh, it, sim to real, is it more difficult on certain classifications of objects or certain traits of objects or more difficult? So I would think on things like transparent objects and whatnot, it'd be a little bit harder, but so is the sim to real process and the style transfer process is it more difficult on certain classifications of objects uh, or I certain see. object traits okay thank you for questions so it is difficult to compare that these two network because of the these have different metric or different tasks however yes i could say that style transfer uh don't uh doesn't require the uh, many of data compared with their uh, kind of detection or classification uh just in my opinion uh but this is uh, based on the yeah task requirement so i can't compare the, this both of things so mm -hmm. i can say that which one is uh, easier or difficult mm -hmm. but this yes task require different requirements. Mm -hmm. so basically different uh, uh networks are geared towards different objects so what might be hard for one might be easier for another is that is that correct yeah, i think so okay yeah. all right uh right there I see. I see. Yeah. So the, the question was um, with ray tracing and other improvements to um, a, a sort of uh, digital and, and graphical methods, uh, what do you see as the uh, benefits or differences between a uh, style transfer approach versus just a high fidelity uh, ray traced model? Yeah, this is the really other good question. And I think if you already satisfy the rendered image, uh, you can go for it, I think. However, usually kind of a transparency object and the kind of shiny object, usually it is difficult to render because we have to set the precise lighting setting and material. So this experimental, so this black bottle, it, even if we apply the, our state transfer network, this uh, jump of accuracy is really tiny because this rendering quality already high. So if you feel that, how can I say, rendering image, rendering image quality is low, so I prefer to use a kind of structural network from C to real because we can cut the kind of manual operation, kind of touching the material using uh, using the amount of time. So this is uh, kind of my answer for that. Then I see some this approach. All right, I think we're gonna call it here for the Q&A for this. Taku, thank you very, very much. Um, Yes.